thing we're going to do is set up our grid for our Alamo picture. And whenever you set up a grid, um, you need a ruler, a pencil, and an eraser. Um, you can use a regular pencil if you want, but especially if you have a hard time drawing softly, it's better to use a lighter pencil. So remember, a number two yellow pencil is an HB pencil. It's right in the middle. So if we go to something lighter like a 2H or a 4H, that's going to allow you to make lighter lines that are easier to cover up and erase. I'm going to use the um, number two pencil today just because I want to make sure you guys can see it on the video. But if I was drawing for myself, I would use a 4H so my lines would be lighter. Now, when you use your ruler, you want to make sure that you are using the zero mark on your ruler instead of the edge of the ruler. Otherwise, you're going to run out of space before you finish making your grit and your um, squares are just going to be slightly off. Okay, so I'm lining up my zero with the edge of my paper and this grid is going to be two inches by two inches. So I am going to mark every two inches. And again, as you can see, I'm making my lines nice and dark so you can see them on the video, but your lines should be much softer. So if you want to see what those soft lines look like in comparison, this is my 4H pencil. And these lines are much lighter in comparison than my HB. I'm even trying to color as darkly as I can with these so you can still see it. So with this 4-H, if I was pressing really softly, they would barely be visible. And that's great when it comes to finishing your picture because it's hard to get all of these dark lines covered up and erased. All right. So you need at least two points if you're going to line them up correctly. But I like to do three points because it makes it easier to make sure it's lined up and I don't have my ruler crooked because I don't want to end up with random trapezoids. I want squares. All right, so I've made my marks every two inches. Now I need to turn my ruler and line it up. And now you can see these points are all lined up, so I'm ready to make my lines. Okay, so see that's nice and straight. This is even and perfectly parallel to the side of the paper. It's not going at any kind of a weird angle. Okay, um, the great thing if you're using these plastic rulers is that they are two inches, so it's going to make it really easy for you to make sure you're lining things up correctly because you can use the dots. You can also use the edge of your ruler to make sure that you've done it correctly. Um, so that's kind of nice. But if you draw your lines correctly, it shouldn't be a problem either way. All right, so we're just going to finish this out. Now, if you are left-handed, you probably want to go the other direction because it's going to be easier to make your marks with your ruler. Since I'm right-handed, I'm going from left to right. But if I was left-handed, I would probably want to go from right to left so I could use that side of my ruler instead. So I've got one side done. So you can see it's going all the way, okay? So I have to turn my paper now and I have to repeat these steps in the opposite direction. So again, with my ruler, I'm going to line it up with the zero. And I can use this line as a guide to make sure my ruler is straight. And I'm going to mark two, four, six, eight, ten. I don't have to mark 12. It's the edge of the paper, okay? And we're going to go again. And... Again, you have to have at least two reference points, but if you make a third, it's going to be easier to make sure your lines are perfectly perpendicular to the ones we already drew, making nice squares. Okay, so I've got my lines. And again, if you're left-handed, start on this side so you can see the edge of your ruler easier. Okay. If you're right-handed, you're going to start on the left side like I am. All right. 
So here's my grid. Now, some of you may have a little bit more struggle with this. It is very precise. It's very mathematical. Um, so if you have a big eraser like this, this is going to be a really good friend for you because it's going to be easy to erase any mistakes that you make and redo the lines. And also don't forget when you write your name in the corner, if you write it really small, if you make a big mistake on this page, it's hard to erase. You'll be able to use the other side of your paper. So don't write your name across the middle because then you're not going to be able to erase and use this side. If you just write it in the corner, you have a whole nother side to try again if you make big mistakes. So that's the end of part one, how to make your grid. Now we're ready to start using the grid. So um, this time, since it's your first time using a grid, I've gone ahead and added the grid on top of the photo we're using for the Alamo today. Um, this is set up the same way. You could do this on any photo by making a grid here, and it's obviously going to be smaller than this one because the photo is smaller. So this is like a half inch. Okay, so now I'm going to use this grid to draw on here. So how do I do that? I look at each square and I try to copy what's in that picture. Okay, now one of the really good tricks that I like for doing this is using post-it notes so I can focus in on one spot. So if you look at the Alamo, you'll notice there is not really anything at the top except for right here, this T90 corner, there is the top of the flag post. So I want to draw that little, little circle first. So I'm going to mark off these so I can focus on my one square that I'm drawing. And it looks like this is right smack dab in the middle of this line touching the line. So I'm going to try to make the top of that flagpole match the same space, okay? Now I'm going to move to the next row. And you can decide if you want to work top to bottom or left to right. You can start at any place at bottom or top of your photo, left or right. I'm just starting at this corner because it was so easy. And then I'm going to move to this flag now. So when I look at this flag, I notice that the line of the flag post comes straight down from what I just drew. And it touches the bottom of this square. So I know that the flag pole is going to come directly here. Okay. If you need help drawing the straight lines that you see in your photo, you can still use your ruler. Okay. And then here is the beginning of the Texas flag. And so I'm looking to see how far down I should start it. And I know that it's going to go all the way to the edge of my paper. Okay, and I'm paying attention to little details. Like if you look, there's a little curve to the flag here because it's blowing in the wind. So I can actually draw that and it's going to give my picture more life and make it look more realistic because I'm paying attention to those little details. Okay, so when you're doing a grid drawing, details matter. All right, so here is my beginning. Okay, I'm going to do one more block for y'all so you can see. So I'm going to go down again. If you need extra post-its, I'm going to have these with me so you guys can use them. All right, we're going to go keep going down like this flagpole. It continues to the bottom of this third square. Okay, and then I see the beginning of what looks like that tree right here. And I don't even have to, if I didn't know what this was, I could still draw this because I'm looking at the lines. I'm not drawing a tree. I'm drawing lines at the top of this paper. Okay. So if you think about it as just drawing lines and shapes, instead of worrying about what it is you're making, it may make things easier for you. Oh, look, I was wrong. That's not the top of the tree. That's the top of the building. And it didn't matter. I still drew it correctly because I wasn't worried about what it was, right? I was just drawing it. Now I see there's a line right here at the top. And it looks like the flagpole is going to end just a little bit past there. And there's this black rectangle behind it. It's probably a window, right? 
but it doesn't matter what it is. I'm going to draw it what I see. Okay. And then here is the tree, and it's kind of got these um, curved lines going. See right here? And if I don't want to add all this texture in right now, I can leave it, or I can go ahead if I just want to get as much detail as possible from the get-go, I can go ahead and already start adding the details. So you can decide, do you just want to focus on outlines to start with, or do you want to do all the details right away? You do not need to shade things in, but if it helps you keep track of what you're doing, you can. But we are going to be going over these with oil pastels. So shading is not important because we're going to color over everything with oil pastels. Since we're doing that, though, we can cover up any light shading with oil pastels. So if you're using an HB very lightly or a 4H pencil, it's going to be easy to cover up these little shading details that you might add to help you with the oil pastels. So you don't have to worry about them too much, okay? All right, so just keep going. So say I finished this whole first row, so now I'm going to start, or this whole first column rather. So I'm going to go down this column now. Remember, you can go left to right, top to bottom, bottom to top, right to left. You just need to pick a spot to start on and go one square at a time. Don't try to draw the whole picture at once. That's going to make using the grid useless. So I might want to move my post-it notes now so I can focus in on a new section. All right, so see, I'm just going, again, one column at a time, or you could go one row at a time, okay? So I don't know if you're noticing, but I'm using other reference points. I'm looking at where's the middle of this square. Should that go to the middle? How far should it go? I'm looking at do these windows line up or are they one wider than the other? And that's also helping me as I pay attention. Remember that big word we used just, or last class was proportion. What size is something compared to something else? Okay, is this one the same size, narrow, or wider than the one down here. So that's proportion. Is the space of the sky in this square the same, larger, or smaller than the space of this part of the building in this square? Proportion. Proportion is very helpful when drawing, and especially if you are doing a grid drawing, okay? And again, my shading is not like I'm not trying to make things super dark or super light or have tons of detail in that because my shadows are just to help me when I get ready to do my oil pastels to see things that are in the picture. I'm not actually going to be doing this just in pencil. So these lines and shadows are just reference points. And I can move my post-it notes as needed to focus in on something, especially if I'm having a hard time drawing it. I may find that that's going to be really helpful for me.
as you get towards the center of this picture here, things are going to start to get more difficult because there's a lot more shadows and details. So just take your time, focus in on one thing and the next. Sometimes it helps to kind of move your post-it and look at what you're seeing. Always move it back. So like now I realize that this shadow right here is really important. It's this edge of the window. So I'm going to kind of try to place that top of that shadow here so I have it later. All right, so I hope watching me do some of this grid helped you. And you guys are just going to keep working all the way across. And then next time what we're going to do when we're done with this um, is to start worrying about what lines need to be erased, which ones can be covered up, and then doing our oil pastels. So it should be a lot of fun.